after I started work as a cub reporter in 1955, I found there was plenty of food for thought. Whenever we ECHO reporters were called on to cover a social event of any sort, the organisers always gave us a really warm welcome. They made such a fuss of us that it seemed as though they viewed us as celebrities. And it wasn't just the fuss. If there was any food on offer, we always got a generous helping. I remember an annual meeting held by a local charitable organisation at Loughborough Town Hall. After the business of the meeting was over, out came the food. I was sitting at a round table with three reporters from rival newspapers and very soon our table was groaning under the weight of uh, delicately cut sandwiches, individual trifles and a mouth-watering selection of cakes including chocolate eclairs, vanilla slices and cream horns, not to mention scones filled with uh, strawberry jam and cream. One of the rival reporters who lived on his own had brought along a carrier bag and he put the leftover food in it at the end. I just think it kept him going for a day or two. When I was aged 17 or 18 I was also called upon to uh, cover evening dinner engagements and I remember that my first dinner was at the uh, Bulls Head Hotel at Shelthorpe and was held by a Bulls Club. I was so nervous about it all that when I was putting a mouthful of pea, a, a forkful of peas to my mouth, some of the peas rolled off and went onto the other side of the table, and I was so embarrassed I blushed scarlet. But at least I did have some idea of table etiquette, unlike a rival reporter who was sitting opposite me. When the cheese board came around, he grabbed a huge piece of cheddar with his bare hands and put it on his plate. The waitress was so disgusted she quickly took it back and cut him off a very thin slice as if in protest. Besides digesting the lessons about food, back at the office I was also learning about how um, news stories are put together and uh, how news is gathered, but when it came to story writing it was stressed to me time and again that the most important thing was the introduction. Every story must have a good introduction, the first words must count. I was interested to read in the book about a famous introduction from an American newspaper which started something like this. Seven of Mrs. Brown's ex-husbands went to court yesterday, six in glass bottles and one in a blue serge suit. I never wrote an introduction quite as uh, stunning as that when I was a cub reporter, but at least I did try to make the first par paragraph count, even if it was on, only on a three-paragraph story. In a previous video, I said that it's very easy for reporters to get the wrong end of the stick and not understand what people are actually thinking. And I was feeling a bit disheartened after a couple of errors of judgment. And then I received a big boost when I read a book about by, by a, a novelist who in her youth had been a cub reporter on a small weekly newspaper. She was assigned to cover a dance at the local lunatic asylum and went along fearing that there'd be bedlam. She thought that the patients on the dance floor would be really misbehaving and creating scenes. But in fact, she was very surprised to find that the atmosphere was very quiet and everybody was behaving quite properly except for one woman with shingled hair and wearing a parakeet coloured dress who was rushing around with the knees going up and down like pistons barging into people. And the novelist turned to the matron who was standing alongside her and said, Oh dear, I suppose she must be one of your worst cases. To which the matron replied angrily, Good gracious, no, that's the occupational therapist. I felt a lot better after reading that. 